Okay, with the transfer made now, it's time to touch up our uh, surface so that it's ready for etching. So as I said before, the areas that you can see where the toner didn't transfer really well, um, we're going to touch that up using some standard nail polish. Um, I like to use the, the cheapest nail polish available, maybe something that somebody might even discard. Uh, that's all you need. So really, again, try to. we're going to just go ahead and touch up very gently those areas that... that, that um, we don't want to have etched, as you can see, the areas that don't have the toner uh, you know, transferred very well. The other thing that we want to do is all of these edges here where the, the metal is exposed, we're going to need to touch those up as well. And then finally, we're going to put a 3 8 inch border of nail polish all the way around because when we dip this in the etchant, the etchant is going to come up on the side slightly and you don't want that area to get etched, I suppose. Maybe you do. But in this case, I'm going to show you how to avoid that issue. So, with that, we, we shake up um, the uh, nail polish. We've already done that a little bit here. So, we'll just go ahead and open that nail polish up. And you want to be very uh, sparing with it because if you do uh, overwrite an area that uh, you don't want to have nail polish on, it's pretty hard to recover from that. So basically all we're doing is just going to go ahead and gently apply the nail polish over those areas that uh, need to have that touch up done as you can see. You're just going to go ahead and you know put it right over those areas. Um, they're pretty easy to spot because they obviously don't have any toner on them. And so take your time. Uh, you want to do a good job here. You don't want to uh, you know get it in the areas that, that already have toner but you know, give yourself ample time to, to uh, touch up all those areas as well as you can, and then we'll go ahead and do the sides as well. Okay, so now we have all the touch-ups done. As you can see, all the areas that had um, the... Uh, uh, toner not transferred through very well. I went ahead and touched up very gently with um, the nail polish and then I went around the edge as you can see here and made sure that no exposed aluminum uh, was shown where the toner didn't uh, go over the side obviously and then I went ahead and I put nail polish all the way around maybe about halfway up you know to the to the rim of the aluminum. You don't have to go all the way up. I suppose you could uh, it won't hurt anything to go all the way up and it might even be a good precaution if you'd like to do that because what we're going to do is take this and then we're going to dip it this way and let it float inside uh, the etchant and so the etchant will ride up on the edge so you're going to definitely have to do something and I would recommend at least three-eighths of an inch although I probably went a little bit more than that here and so um, again you don't have to be perfect with this but you have to make sure that all the areas that the toner did not uh, adhere that you should go ahead and touch up. Now there's of course little modded areas as you can see that I didn't do um, and it's really impossible to do them all. I suppose you could try um, but you know I told you that I wanted this to have kind of a road worn feeling to it and uh, some of those modded areas that you can see will etch but it'll give it that that uh, uh, that timbre if you will or that feeling and so um, so I think now we're just gonna let it go ahead and dry uh, give it about an hour to dry real well, and then we'll get ready for the etching. So now we're ready, ready to uh, etch the uh, aluminum enclosure. As you can see, I've touched everything up, and I've got the sides already um, uh, painted so that uh, they won't etch either. The things to remember while doing this, you want to do this in an environment where you have plenty of water available. Now I won't actually etch inside uh, this tub. This tub right here serves as a secondary containment. The actual etching is going to go in this little disposable plastic uh, Tupperware container. Never use anything that comes into contact with food. So when you do this, you want to make sure you do it with something that you will dispose of afterwards. And so this is going to sit inside the larger tub which then sits inside the kitchen sink. Now I'm going to be using ferric chloride which is a standard PC board etchant that's widely available. Now before you ever handle this stuff 
directly. Make sure that you use the proper PPE or personal protective equipment. I like to use nitrile gloves and uh, um, uh, safety goggles just in case. Uh, we'll also have a funnel ready so that we will uh, dispose of the ferric chloride back into the container when it's over. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and put on uh, my personal protective equipment before we begin here. And the etching process takes about 10 minutes. Now if you're etching, if your ferric chloride has been in a cold environment and you want to warm it up, you can put it in a, in a warm water bath for 10-15 you know, minutes to get it up to temperature. And so we're ready. I'm going to go ahead and I forgot to put my goggles on. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pour the, the ferric chloride um, into the uh, small Tupperware container. And as you can see, it's kind of a, a thick, liquidy uh, consistency. We're going to put that right there in the middle of um, the secondary containment area. And now we're going to take, uh, we're going to go ahead and take our um, enclosure and we're going to let it float basically in that etchant, just like that. And we're going to let that go for about 10 minutes. And so in 10 minutes time I'm going to come back and take a look at it. You can occasionally agitate back and forth like this if you'd like. Um, as it's beginning to etch, we can actually take a look at it real quick here. Um, it'll begin to bubble as you can see. The bubbling is happening in the areas where there is uh, uh, no toner and that's going to etch our pattern onto um, the, uh, the bulldog face um, in the front of the petal. And so again, we're just going to let it float in here. Um, that's why we didn't want to go ahead and drill any holes ahead of time because if we did then that etchant would start to get inside the enclosure and we would have all sorts of other issues. And now you can see why we went ahead and painted around the edges so that as it's floating in there um, it serves as kind of like uh, a boat inside that etchant. So we're going to go for 10 minutes and then uh, we'll see you on the other side. So it has been 10 minutes now and we're ready to go ahead and finish this up. So what we want to do now is go ahead and remove um, the enclosure from the etchant. We're going to put the etchant aside and we're going to use the larger tub to then rinse any excess etchant off of um, uh, the enclosure. So with the 10 minutes being up, I'm just going to gently remove this and kind of angle it down so that any remaining drips will come off and go into our plastic container, as you can see. You can see all the bubbles that have formed on the surface here which means that the reaction has taken place and hopefully our pattern is etched into the aluminum with satisfaction. So we're going to move the um, enclosure out of the way and then we're going to bring this back again. We're going to use just some cold water to gently wash off any etchant that is on there. As you can see, there's quite a bit of uh, residue that came off as we washed it. And we need to dispose of that appropriately. I wouldn't throw that down the drain or anything like that. So here it is. Now you can you notice that the areas that, that were etched are now kind of a gray or blackish, uh, dark gray color. And that color indicates that the etching actually occurred all the way down to the substrate of the aluminum enclosure. And so really the next step, of course, is to dry this thing off and then we're going to go ahead and strip off all of the fingernail polish as well as the um, toner that was left over from the um, laser printer application. And that's what we're going to do next. So for this part of the process we're going to see how well we did. Now that we've etched and cleaned off 
um, all the etching from the surface of the enclosure. We're going to use some standard 100% pure acetone, which is fingernail polish remover. Uh, you can get this, uh, you know, at Walmart or any of the drug stores in the area that uh, you can pick up fingernail polish. And so again, you're going to want to use uh, some nitrile gloves um, and in a well-ventilated area. I've got some paper towels here that we're going to uh, also use. So, so uh, let's see what happens. We're going to just pour a little bit of um, the uh, acetone on the surface here, and we begin to rub off. all of the fingernail polish as well as any of the uh, residuals from uh, the, the uh, printing process which is of course the toner and as you can see it's coming off on this uh, paper towel quite a bit and but you know really when you look at this thing um, it's amazing the kind of detail that has come through um, you can see the transistors that are hanging on the bulldogs uh, uh, collar here, uh, the symbology very well. You can see that the Bulldog Face logo came out excellent. Um, you know the spurs up here, uh, the uh, the input and output logos as well, volume, tone, and sustain. So overall, I'm very happy with the way this came out. And you can see how important it is to touch up those areas with fingernail polish uh, before you go through the etching process. So all in all, um, you know, really all we have to do now is just go ahead and, you know, clean off uh, the sides where I had some extra fingernail polish to prevent that etchant from leaching up into uh, an area that I didn't want to all the way around. And so um, after I do that, I'm going to give it a quick rinse, and uh, the pedal then is ready for drilling and installation. Okay, so now I've got, gone ahead and cleaned up the entire enclosure using acetone, including the sides. I uh, just wanted to, uh, you know, kind of touch base here for a second before we went to the next step. As you can see, lots of detail. Okay, you can actually see the pixelation um, in uh, some of the detail, which tells you how precise the etching actually came out. Uh, the detail around the transistors again and uh, the logos, everything's very sharp, everything looks very good. I'm very happy with the way this came out. Uh, a couple pointers though to make sure that you're on the straight and narrow with this. You don't want to over etch because if you leave it in the etchant too long what happens is it begins to underflow and the etchant will actually go underneath uh, the areas that you don't want it to go and it'll begin to uh, um, blur the image that you want. So keep it at about 10 minutes. Uh, make sure your etchant's up at room temperature, a little bit warmer. Um, the other thing to keep note is that you never want to go ahead and use any steel wool on this after you've etched it or sand it in any way. And the reason why is because the areas that have been etched that you see in black, that black is not from the toner, it's not from paint, it's not from anything. That black is actually the oxidation of the aluminum and it's a permanent part of that aluminum and you don't want to lose that oxidation. That gives us the, the nice contrast that you see. If you make the mistake of actually going back and sanding this or um, you know using a piece of steel wool, you can actually feel the etching in here. It's actually etched into the aluminum. Um, it's a depression and the etched areas are oxidized and that oxidation is what gives it that dark nice contrasty color and if you go ahead and try to sand this to shine it up a little bit you're going to remove that oxidation and uh, ruin the image that you've taken all this time to create so make sure that you don't uh, polish or don't uh, you know steel wool the enclosure at this point now the sides you could do that if you want to polish up the sides any areas that don't have any etching that would be fine and so the next step is of course to go ahead and start to lay out the drilling and uh, and uh, finish off the enclosure.